All right, so I'll go first. My name is Tillman Foman, and I was once addicted to heroin. I was uh, Xanax. I mean, whatever it was to change my mind, I would do it. And uh, then one day I heard, do you want change from Jesus Christ? And I said, yes, I do. And ever since, I've been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my story is very much the same. Um, I became addicted at a young age, and that became my everything. All I wanted was to get high to escape the pain and trauma that I'd experienced. And um, then one day, I was at the bottom of the bottom, the lowest point in my life, and I had an encounter with Jesus Christ, and I've not been the same since. Amen. So I know Terry gets hyped up here about, you know, CR and... You know, we are CR. Can I hear y'all say it? We are. CR. And we tell the truth so we can. Shame and that's all I know. So. But we're taking dope dealers. We're taking dope dealers and making. Oh. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to start out by uh, telling y'all a little bit, a little bit about who I was, um, what happened, and who I am now. Just to give y'all a little brief of who I am. So, uh, like I said before. You know, I was I was addicted to drugs for so long. My life was filled up with uh, nothing but trying to fill this empty hole. I come from a, a family that was separated at eight years old, and I was always trying to find something to fill that hole. Um, and I just it was with you know drugs, relationships, it just went on and on. And this started whenever I was ten years old. This started happening. Um, I was thirty four years old before I ever opened up the Bible for myself. Um, one night at CR on a Thursday night at Southside over there, uh, I went out by myself. Uh, Jessica stayed at home. Um, this is my beautiful wife. We've been married, uh, since, uh, September 25th, 2010. Uh, we dated five years. Thank y'all. We dated five years before that. So we've been together for a long time and, um, uh, our love for each other was with alcohol and good marijuana. And that's what got us together. So I went to CR. I was tired. I was tired of living the way that I was living. I've been living it for a long time and I just was plum tired. And so I went to CR on Thursday night and uh, I heard Pat Chastain say one thing. I, I don't remember anything about that night, but one thing. And uh, he said, do you want change? And that night on February 13th, 2015, I gave my life to Christ Amen. and my life has been changed ever since. And who I am now? I am a, a dad, I am a husband, I am a good employee, I think, uh, and I am a, uh, a follower of Jesus Christ, that all that I have to do today is to s submit to Him and follow what He has told me to do in His Word, through His Word. So I am a changed follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, and my story is very much the same. You know, as a child, I um, suffered years, a few years of abuse by the hands of a family member. And then through my teenage years, there was some trauma in there. Um, and I didn't know how to cope with the circumstances that I was dealt. Um, so the only thing that I knew to do was to escape. And so I started using drugs. And it just, as it always does, it just progressed and spiraled out of control. Um, Tillman and I, you know, in the beginning, our relationship was very, very toxic. Um, for the majority of the 17 years that we've been together, we spent it in drug addiction. But praise God, the last seven of those 17 have been um, chasing after him, of, after the most high. Amen. Um, but... So after Tillman got saved that night at CR, he came home and he was like, I gave my life to Jesus. And I was like, woohoo, you know, good job. Um, and then two weeks after that, you know, once you get saved, you can't sin anymore and get away with it. And you can't sin anymore and, get, and enjoy it. So we went right back to doing the same thing. Well, two weeks later, he ended up getting a DUI. Um, and then two weeks after that, he went to the rescue mission in middle Georgia. And for the next nine months, he was becoming, he, oh my gosh. He was made new. I remember the first time I saw him after almost three months, um, it was at Celebrate Recovery because I went to a program myself and he just looked like he was floating around everywhere and like glowing and from the inside out, he had come alive, you know, and I wasn't in a Christ-centered recovery place. I was very much in the world, AA, NA type stuff. 
and I was very, I become jealous, you know, but um, by this point, I had given my life to Jesus. I was in a detox center when um, Christ stepped in the room and, and saved me. Um, but I went back out there and started using. He stayed the course. And then I went to a program called the Potter's House for Women Amen. once he graduated. That's right. Um, and that is where I came alive. I had my experience with Jesus. This is very similar to what he had. And um, it was hard. It was tough being away from family. But, man, it was the sweetest seven months of my entire life. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. So all y'all that are here that are in a recovery program, stay the course, man. It's hard now. But it's absolutely worth it, 100% on the other side. Yes, yes. And my ladies and yes. parents, love y'all. Yes, yes. um. Hey, well, um, let's give a shout out to the uh, to the well. They're here tonight. Woo-hoo! How about let's give it up for the Women's Treatment Center. All right. All right. And let's give it up for the mission. Right. Yeah. And then let's give it up for everybody that's here tonight. Come on, let's give it up. All right, so tonight, that's you. That's me. That's you. <laughs> hey, so this might be five minutes, this might be ten minutes, it might be an hour, okay? Just give y'all a heads up on that, all right? Just bear with us. Let's bear with us. All right? It might go real good. quick, it might be long, I don't know. Holy Spirit got us. Please. Amen. Um, so tonight, we're going to be talking to you, you guys, about sanity. Yeah, we are. And the principle for tonight's service is principle two. Earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Matthew 5, 4. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. All right. And then the step for tonight's service is step two. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Philippians 2, 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to to fill his purpose. Insanity has been described as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Hey, who's been in that boat? Doing the same thing over and over again. I'll tell you what, I did that for 22 years. Every time I would do something, it would would be the same thing over and over again. I wanted to try something different and then expecting, which it was the same thing, but wanting different results from the same thing that I was doing. Mm-hmm. Insanity. Crazy. Just crazy. But on the other side of that coin, uh, the definition of sanity is wholeness of mind, making decisions based on the truth. Do y'all know that the truth is a person? Amen. And who's that person? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So when we have an encounter with the Savior of the world, with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, He brings us to wholeness of mind, and then we can make sane you know, appropriate choices under his guidance and authority. Amen. Our acrostic tonight is going to be sanity. And the letter S is for strength. Jesus gives us the strength to face the fears that in our past we allowed to drive our behaviors. You know, God gives me the strength to whenever I come into conversations at work and they're talking of, you know, stuff that they did over the weekend or stuff like that, those, those things I would, I was scared to go up to in the beginning because I thought I was going to, you know, engage in those conversations, stuff like that. But speaking the name of Jesus Christ, whenever those conversations come up, they change. It gives the Jesus gives me the boldness to step into these conversations and to say, hey, you know, Jesus loves you. You know, I can walk up to a conversation and just say, hey, uh, Jesus changed my life. And immediately the conversations change. Mm-hmm. It says right here, my mind and my body may grow weak, but God is my strength. He is all I ever needed. Psalms seventy-three twenty-six. The next letter is letter A. And it's for acceptance. We learn to have real expectations of ourselves and others. Accept one another. Then for the glory of God, our Christ has accepted you. Romans fifteen seven. Acceptance. Hey, man, that's a big one for me. You know, I always wanted everybody to accept me for the things that I have done. The things that, you know, that I would go out and get drunker than everybody else. Or I would be the one to... Um, be the craziest because I, I wanted that acceptance, you know, and uh, and the realistic expectations, you know. Um, 
we all going to fail. I'm going to fail. You know, the, the, the guy next to me, he's going to fail. You know, I can't put expectations on somebody like they're never going to fail. Like I'm never going to fail. Jessica's never going to fail me. You know, that's not true. But I know that Jesus Christ is never going to fail me. He's always going to stay the same. He's going to be, he's my forefront. He's the one that I seek after all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's my turn. Yeah. Okay. Next is N. N is for new life. We discover that we have an opportunity for a second chance. We do not have to live by our old ways any longer. Um, I'm so grateful for that. My old ways were to lie to you, to manipulate you, to steal from you. It didn't matter who you were. I was stealing from my own parents, you know, um, but now I have, the, I have the power and the freedom to be honest, to be truthful. I don't have to tell a lie anymore, and I am freer than I have ever been because of that simple, for many other things, but that simple fact right there, the fact that I can tell you the truth because I'm living a life of integrity has the greatest amount of freedom that I've ever experienced in my whole life. And the scripture for this one is, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Yeah. I is for integrity. We begin to follow through on our promises. Others start trusting what we say. You know, I marked out promises because... And... Um, Matthew. In Matthew 5, 37, it says, All you need to say is no or simply yes. Anything beyond that comes from the evil one. And why I say that is because whenever I tell you something today, I don't have to be like, hey, I, you know, yes, I'll be there. I swear. I swear I'm going to be there. You know, I, I can say, I can say, yes, I'll be there. And you know what? I'll be there. You know, and it's okay for me to tell you, no, hey, I'm not going to be there. You know what I mean? I don't have to sit there. I can I can have integrity today. I can tell you yes. I can tell you no. And you can and that's so freeing to be to not have to worry about, man, I gotta get there because I, I swore that I was gonna get there. You know? And I think I, I really do believe whenever we start saying, you know, I swear I'll be there, I promise I'll be there, I think you really have intentions in the back of your mind that you're not gonna make it. Mm. You know, you already know that you're not gonna make it and you're putting that you know, you're trying to get acceptance from him or her saying, I'm going to be there whenever it's going to be tough to get there. You hope you're going to be there, but that's not integrity. It's let your yeses be yes and your noes be no. Amen. Amen. All right. Next we have T and T is for trust. We begin to trust the relationships that we're building with others. But most importantly, we begin to trust our higher power, Jesus Christ. He loves us perfectly and without fault. He is 100% faithful 100% of the time. And I don't know about y'all, but um, nobody in my life could trust me, you know. Um, sometimes I'd lie to you just to lie to you because I didn't feel like entering into a conversation or I didn't really want to hear what you had to say, you know. So um, today, man, my family trusts me today. My mom had, um, she broke her leg like October of, 2020, maybe. I don't even know. All these years are running together. But um, she broke her leg, and she had some pain pills that she was um, had been given from the doctor. And do you know that we went over to their house, and they had them? Um, we would have liked for them to put them away, but whatever, they didn't. But the fact that they didn't, you know, they didn't think that we were coming over there to go through their stuff and take their medicine, you know, that she needed. There was a time in our lives where they would have had to hide it because we would have went over there knowing that they had it and we would have taken it, you know? But to have the trust today and man, the trust from the kids, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the, and with each other. That's right. Oh my gosh. It's, it's something else to be trusted by the people that you love. Amen. Psalm 33, four says, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all that he does. All right, next we have why. Why is for your higher power, Jesus Christ. He loves you just the way you are. No matter what you've done in the past, God wants, no matter what you have done in the past, okay, there we are, God wants to forgive it, and he already has. When Jesus was taking his final breaths on the cross, he said, it is finished. That's now right. all you have to do is to receive his gift. Romans 5, 8 says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Not once we got it all together, 
got all prettied up and everything made right. No, that girl, this girl, nine months pregnant with twins shooting up heroin, he died for that girl. Right there where she was, he died for her. That man that was driving um, high on Xanax, couldn't even keep his head up with his kids in the back seat, he died for that man right there. Not this, this guy too, but that guy. <laughs> um, like I already said, I was in a detox facility at the lowest point of my life when um, my Savior, my King, lifted me up out of the pit just the way that I was. All right, now we want to... Oh, go ahead. So I just, I just want to put this out there that, you know, we all know what insanity is, right? But do we know what sanity is? Mm -hmm. Do we really know what being of a clear mind... Whenever you're of a clear mind, whenever you can think clearly, whenever your trust is in... You know, this, this book here says higher power, but we know it's all Jesus Christ. Amen. Whenever we can put our trust in Jesus Christ, be off of drugs with a clear head, we have sanity. You can say, if somebody asks you, do you have sanity, and you have a clear head and you are following what Jesus is telling you to do it, you are sane. Mm -hmm. You are sane. So live it, believe it. You know, acceptance, uh, um, strength, acceptance. New life, integrity, trust, um, and Jesus. And Jesus. And Jesus. Those things right there are sanity. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Carry that with you. Amen. All right. So we're going to close with a story tonight. I think we're kind of doing all right. Um, if Pastor Richard's around. Okay. So this is. Um, Jason, you can come up as well. Yeah, this is out of Luke chapter 8, okay? And this um, is where Jesus has just calmed the storm. He's on the ship with the, on the boat with his disciples, and he's crossing um, to go to the Gerasenes, okay? And this is what it says. It says, They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Anybody been there? May not be literal chains binding us, but what about the chains of addiction? What about the chains of, of grief, of sorrow, of greed? Anger. You know, anger. Fear. Fear. Oh my goodness, depression. Those are chains. And they'll drive you to solitary places. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. Jesus gave them permission. They had to ask permission to do what it was that they wanted to do. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, this is what I want you to hear right here. When they came to Jesus, all the people in the town, when they came to Jesus, they found the man, the demon-possessed man. From whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. The whole town went out to see what had happened. And instantly, the guy encountered Jesus. He was clothed and in his right mind, sitting at the feet, worshiping his Savior. So my question for you tonight is, have you encountered him? Have you met him? Have you allowed him to restore you to sanity? Have you allowed him to set you free and change your life? We love you guys.